So if you know anything about supercomputers, you know that ARM has some massive plays. The biggest is Fugaku that uses the A64FX processor, former world number one supercomputer. Now that processor is made by Fujitsu. And yes, Fujitsu does still make processors. The question has always been, what is Fujitsu going to do next after the A64FX? Well, here at Supercomputing 2023, it's this. It's the Fujitsu Monarca. What makes the Monarca interesting is it's the first chip that I've spoken to people about that is committed to be using the two nanometer node. That is two nanometer. Well, it's two nanometers a name and it's all about the density. The density, huh? It's leading edge. But this is infrastructure. Now I've got this slide up because it's part of their slide deck. On the left, we've got the A64FX. The reason why this was good is that it had tightly coupled memory, HBM, but also essentially large scalar vector extensions. That's the ARM extensions for vector. Monarca takes that to the next level. So we've got second generation scalar vector instructions. They're replacing the HBM uh, with, uh, with, with standard DDR. There's 12 channels of DDR here. But what they're mixing is they're doing the chiplet route. So you've got the core die at two nanometers, the SRAM die at five nanometers. And if you've got large SRAM, you can negate, you can use the cost down benefit of DDR over HBM. PCI Express 6, so that's CXL3. So we're really looking at sort of the 2025, 2026 timeframe for this chip. Uh, but it's also dual socket and 144 cores. Probably going to be using ARM Neoverse, or actually, no, maybe not, because A64FX was a custom architecture design. I'm really looking forward to hearing more about this, whether it's going to go into HPC, whether it's going to be in the next system, uh, next supercomputer that may end up being number one. Uh, but as we find out more information, stay tuned for that. So one of the open source large language models that everybody seems to know about is uh, Llama from Meta. Now, what I like to call the Llama company is actually these guys, Grok. And what they have here is their language processing unit, the LPU. They used to call it the TSP, but now they've rebranded it the LPU because it does large language models very well. And the benchmark they've shown recently is 330 tokens per second. What does that mean? Well, each letter that you get out of the large language model, like ChatGPT, comes with a token value. So 330 means generating it's super fast. I was spoken to the CEO yesterday. They've got plans to scale this up. We're talking hundreds and thousands of chips, enabling people with lots and lots of customers to deploy these in the day center. And this is the PCIe card. Uh, it's a pretty weighty PCIe card. Obviously, it's passively cooled. Um, but obviously, in the server, you obviously have active fans. Uh, lots of power connectors. Um, but uh, one of the big systems they have is 576 of these across eight racks. And there's going to be a lot more where that came from. In the last version of the AI hardware show, uh, Sally and I spoke about the Grok TSP, again, we've now rebranded uh, the LPU, and how we want the next generation silicon to come. It's coming. They won't tell us when. And uh, just, to, just to see what the absurdities of some things of Supercomputing 23 is, uh, they actually rented a llama yesterday, stood outside the convention center for three hours. How the hell do you rent a llama? But keep an eye on Grok. So if you're like me and you're interested in networking technology, one of the things you may have heard about is Intel's OmniPath. This was a technology for networking built for MPI. This is high performance computing based networking. Different from Ethernet because you have different focus points. Now Intel made a go of it with OmniPath, but I eventually abandoned the idea. The IP from OmniPath still lives on today in this company. It's called, let me point up there, Cornelis Networks. What they've done is they've taken the Intel IP and they've been able to iterate and develop on it. What they started with was the 100 gig OmniPath solution. That's 100 gigabit. Uh, they unfortunately missed the 200 gig cycle just because of well, you know, that and what have you. But today at Supercomputing, they're announcing the 400 gig solution, the CN5000. What you end up with is a massive bank of switch ports here. And some of these blades are occupied. We'll get some shots of the back. But here is the CN5000 mock-up card. So this is 400 gig OmniPath, specifically for that sort of MPI HPC solution. Obviously, it still works with machine learning and AI. That's obviously a market that these guys are going to go with. They're announcing it today to find uh, customers and interested parties in developing the next generation of high-speed interconnect in the data center. Now, I've spoken with these guys at a couple of events now, and it turns out they have a very good customer base in Germany, and they're still supporting all the OmniPath systems that are currently in the market today. 
But the point is, there are going to be more, and some of them are going to need the next generation in high performance uh, silicon. So announced today, they say silicon's actually going to be ready kind of next year with a full sampling to deployment uh, more in the second half of next year. So this is a really early announcement, um, but they're trying to hit on the cycle of when some of these companies are going to upgrade to 400 gig. My main specification here is alongside all the networking that you've seen, uh, let's get a couple of these when they're ready and see just how many bits they can push. Oh, and another thing, I spoke to the guys here, they say that copper 400 gig, fine. Even next generation may still be useful. One of the things I love talking about on this channel is AI compute, and the more, the better. Now, if you've been following the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I've interviewed Jim Keller and a bunch of people at Tens Torrent. Well, they're here at Supercomputing, and this is their new announcement. It's called Galaxy, and uh, they've dis they have the funkiest designers on here. What's inside is so many of their chips. The point is that this is going to be one of their go-to-market strategies. I'm not, I can't remember necessarily if this has grayscale or wormhole, but you essentially, again, buy multiple of these, connect them together. Ten's current whole philosophy with their AI chips is one core looks like one chip, looks like uh, one system, looks like one rack, looks like one supercomputer. So the point is, the more of these you buy, the more of them you can essentially infinitely scale in a you know, 2D fashion. Um, I remember having conversations with Jim Keller saying, well, the brain actually has a little bit of 3D, but I expect we'll get that maybe in a future generation, if the algorithms allow. But uh, Everybody keeps asking, when is Tensorrent going to come with product to market? And this is essentially what they're going to customers with today. They called it Galaxy, not to be confused with the other AI company that's doing something else called Galaxy. Um, yeah, and it's designed just to be a fully self-contained box with their chips inside. Um, I'm going to be at Tens Torrent's uh, headquarters in a couple of weeks, actually. We're going to do a live unboxing, not only of one of these, but also one of their cards with one of their engineers. And I'm hoping Jim Keller comes by and perhaps he'll answer a few of your questions. But yeah, stay tuned for that and stay tuned for more videos from Supercomputing 23. So one of the companies we've recently covered in the AI hardware show is a company called New Reality. Now, back then in that video, I described it as an assistant to an accelerator for AI. Really hard to pin down. I spent some time with these guys at the show, and uh, they showed me their three systems that they're partnering with. Um, what you really have to think about is that their chip, the NR1, is more like a host with accelerators to help accelerate machine learning. So if you come in closely into the system, what we have is the New Reality NR1. They look like PCI cards. So automatically we think that, that that's a device. But instead, these are CPUs connected over PCIe here to Qualcomm's Cloud AI 100 cards. Now, these cards themselves uh, we could talk about because Qualcomm hasn't been saying much about it. We just had the AI 100 Ultra being launched this week. But the whole point here is that in order to accelerate your inference on these cards, you have New Reality as a CPU this side. Now, this is a Qualcomm version. We've also got a version with IBM. This is interesting because New Reality is actually using some IBM IP inside their own chip. Uh, this is the first time I've seen IBM's AI use outside of IBM. Um, so we're going to have to see how that works in future generations. And then over this side, we've got uh, AMD uh, Xilinx FPGAs. There are VAO series um, doing you know, more sort of FPGA style compute. What's going to be interesting here with New Reality? So they've got the they've got the chip, they've got the PCIe card, which is actually a host, and they've got their systems. Again, these guys seem to have a multi generational roadmap. Um, they're going to start talking to me soon about the underlying architecture. So you've got to stay tuned on the channel for that. So I'm here at Nimbus Data. They are a storage company that deals in high performance, high capacity storage. Here I'm holding the Exa Drive. This is only their 32 byte model, but if you peer around the corner in the case, that's their 100 terabyte model. That's 100 terabytes of flash in a three and a half inch device. Uh, I've asked for these. The funny thing is, it's also a SATA connector. So imagine SATA storage at 100 terabytes of drive. What they have new at the show this year, however, is this. This is the Exanode. Exanode looks like a storage device. Inside, you have 16 terabytes of storage. What else do you have? Four ARM A72 cores. Now, A72 isn't the latest, but with this, you can do additional security and compute on your drive as data is going in and out. What makes this special, though, is this word here, Ethernet. Now, there's no Ethernet port on this drive, so how do they do it? The standard SSD connector supports Ethernet 
uh, electrical and protocol signals across some of the pins. So the point is, you can have a blade of these, you know, one, two, three, four, all the way up to 32, and on the back end is just a network switch, just an ethernet switch. So if you've heard of this thing called NVMe over fabric, this is where you plug storage drives like this directly into a network such that all the systems, you know, depending on how your fabric manager is being done, can access it. This is a drive that can help enable that. And this is their new Exynode. Instead of calling it an SSD, they want to call it an SSN, uh, solid state networking device, I assume. Um, but yeah, 16 terabytes in this. Um, while they don't do the node, this version in different colors, I'm sure they would if I asked, the couple over there that you may have seen when we panned over, this is the Exa Drive Go. This is a standard SSD. Again, it's just a SATA connection. Uh, they'll do this in a variety of colors as well. Uh, so uh, I think I want the red one and Dom wants the blue one. Uh, so if we get these into tests, we'll let you know. So here at Supercomputing 23, one of the key highlights is optical connectivity. If we want supercomputing in the future to be large scale, we need optical to compute because of just how many systems are built together and just in the data center, we need the bandwidth. One of the key companies doing that right now is called IR Labs. They're working on an in-silicon photonic solution that can be integrated as a chiplet into whatever SOC needs to use it. So at our labs, we're at the forefront of developing optical interconnect technology. That's built on our Terrify optical chiplet and a supernova light source. They've got a few of their designs here. Dom, if you'd like to come in. So this is their generational sort of waveguide. And you can see they're building the laser and the, the data. Uh, sorry, they're just building the data uh, and the path light into the silicon itself. Now, the interesting thing is, and I'm not sure if we're able to see it, but here are some of the big cards if you'd like to have a look. What we've got here is we've got the Intel Adulex 7 uh, FPGA combined with two of their optical I.O. chiplets. Now these guys can do four terabits per second per card, and they've got a demo in the back, I'll see if we can get to see it, of doing four terabits per second per card. We're talking about 40,000 terabits transferred since this morning. Hopefully we'll get a chance to look at that. They did technically have this demo on hot chips, and it was funny because the sunlight on it was uh, playing a little bit with the waveguide. This is obviously built for the data center, so that wouldn't happen. Um, but they have a roadmap in order to build on this technology. Let's see if we can go into the back room and have a look. So this is part of the back room, and what they've got here is essentially um, an evaluation kit. This is using some of their silicon to provide to partners, see if it's of any use for them in their big scale SOC. Um, they're looking at next gener their next generation silicon. So they already have one silicon package, and Dom, if you'd like to come in, it's actually this top one here. That's what they're currently, uh, that's currently productized today. Um, and the one underneath is just what it looks like. And the idea is that they shrink this down into a smaller size, sort of like M.2 width. Uh, so in order you can scale out what your bandwidth needs. Now let's see if we can get access to this demo. So here we have the demo. You've got two cards, and what this demo is showing is just the cards talking to each other. So we're talking about raw bandwidth. Nothing to do with compute yet. This is just bandwidth, because this AR Labs is a company focusing on bandwidth. Uh, you got your, again, your Intel Agilex 7 FPGA is talking to each other. And what we have here, at four terabit per second, data transferred today, 85,000 terabit per second. It's because uh, it's later in the day, so six hours. Up here at the top, you've got your bit error rate. So an important bit in communications is how many bits you have to resend. And they are hitting a very, very, very low number right on the bit error rate, which is very good. And then here we have on the right, we have the demo, four terabit per second. So you've got your IR Labs light source, your Intel FPGA, and same thing on the other side. And a more visual demonstration here is up here the optical I.O. chiplets, the FPGA, and, and some other attachment. And then you here you've got the supernova light source. So this is also a feature of IR Labs. And like I say, optical compute, well, no, this is an optical compute. This is optical connectivity, uh, not only between cards, but you know, within a rack or within a data center. If you want that amazing all-to-all -all environment that the future is going to need, four terabits per second, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing number. and. Uh, I've been working with these guys a little bit, and uh, the roadmap sounds pretty impressive. Uh, hopefully we get to share that with you guys sometime soon.